for story stuff. So good to have everybody. I hope everybody had a good weekend. I certainly did and was able to catch up on some projects and really think about a couple of long-term things, which is really good uh, story-wise. That's always um, important to do, kind of refresh your batteries, recharge yourself, and come back strong when the week starts. So I hope you guys are in that mode right now. <laughs> uh, as we do with these chats, I want to take your questions and talk a little bit about what it takes to be a really strong storyteller, visual storyteller, somebody who's using uh, the visual medium to tell stories, to work on your storyboards, technique, all that stuff. We're going to be covering that today. One thing in particular, though, I wanted to chat about was how to get the most out of your education. Uh, these story skills that we talk about are not easy to come by because it's not a straightforward thing that you study and that you you just kind of like take a couple courses, you learn it, and you're already you know on your way. This is not like um, it's not like figure drawing, for example. If you, if you take a figure drawing class, you're going to study from the model, you're going to study anatomy, and the result that you want is to get a representation of that model in front of you. What happens with storytelling is that you're going to use your own interpretation of the material and you have to put that style, your own like take on things into the work that you do, right? So that that's really, um, that's important that you want to do that for, um, for any kind of story project that you're doing, okay? So... Um, so let me let me give you a little bit. Of, let me tell you a little story, <laughs> a little bit of background here about how I got into this and then how to get the most out of your education because I think it's relevant to what we're talking about here. And as we're doing this, think of your questions because we're going to take those as well. And uh, hopefully, as a group, we can answer some of these. There's a lot of really good conversation that happens uh, in these chats. So I remember this uh, when I first started. Right, I, I went to art school and um, uh, I learned some drawing skills. I learned some technique. And then what I did take was a couple specialized story classes. Now, I think I was really lucky um, back in, in college where I got the opportunity to take, and I remember these because they were really, really special and unique. They were, I took some classes with some Pixar teachers. And these guys, they were working at Pixar, and they came to teach like in the evenings. And they, it was really, really great because they, 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 their focus was always on story. I mean, I think the Pixar guys, the, the tradition that happens at Pixar is they're really focused on the storytelling part no matter what you're doing. So if you're doing lighting, if you're doing modeling, if you're doing rendering, whatever, you're still going to be doing storytelling. And that's really important because um, it affects everything that you do. So that was really great. And that was like my first opportunity to have a mentor. And I, I wrote recently uh, with my buddy Wahab um, about Rob Gibbs, who uh, unfortunately has passed on, but he was a really strong influence uh, on us and a really great guy and an incredible story artist. And it was uh, just so awesome to get that interpretation. So that was the first taste of learning from somebody else who could teach you directly the ropes that you need to learn, you know, the techniques and all the, the thinking process that you need to learn um, and get into this stuff. Now, that was just a, like a really taste of it because it was short-lived no matter how long a college level course is you know it's really actually only about eight weeks which is pretty short if you think about it in the long term but I learned a lot in, in those eight weeks and then I took some other uh, animation and story courses with some other Pixar guys same thing they were story guys and animators that were really really focused to make sure that your story had an idea and that was the first time I got introduced to learning the film language to understand story structure and three act structure and to really get into the nitty gritty of what you need to learn from this okay so then I started like learning I went out and got a job uh, I started working in animation entry level and that's really where the next level kicked in it was the one-on-one -on -one relationship with the story supervisors with the directors that were there at the time and as you're coming up into this business, what you want to do is you want to latch on to those people who are going to give you the nuggets that you need to learn in order to get better at your art. So what I want to get at here is that you need to learn your technique, which is somewhat easier to manage because you can have, there's a straightforward path that you can, you know how to render up something, you know how to use Photoshop or any of the software, right? Right. Then there's the thinking process and the theory behind it, okay? Now, that you can read books and all that stuff too, and I've suggested a couple of those things in our past chats. But then you have to put it together, and this is where you 
it's really helpful to have somebody who can hold your hand and show you exactly what you need to work on. So I remember those first story gigs that I had, you know, it was like commercial work and stuff like that. But when I started working on narrative subjects and longer term things, I got to work on a feature uh, and I was working directly under the story supervisor. You know, I thought I knew what I was doing and I would turn in my work and they would look at it and they would go over it and just correct everything I did. And it was the best thing that could happen to me because that one-on-one -on -one interaction with that person, they would show you the ropes and they would tell you exactly what you needed to change and fix. So they were talking about, okay, this shot is too high. You want to bring the camera lower. And we're talking about camera work. And then we're talking about staging and bringing the characters into that position. They were showing me right there. So that's the difference between like studying from a book and uh, you know maybe getting a really short class that you might get at the, at the college level, right? And working day in and day out with somebody who's gonna like hold your hand and guide you through that story process. That's invaluable, and that's what I call a mentor. That's somebody that like who can give you those direct uh, story experience and the nuggets that you need in order to grow. And I've had that experience a number of times in my career. So that was just the first one when I had the, that job, then I moved on to other things and I worked at Pixar and then you had just the wealth of information of all these guys and the collective experience there and you're saturated by this and you're forced to raise your game because everybody else is working at such a high level okay that's the difference between on the job training and and kind of theory or taking a couple classes here and there you're not only are you saturated with it but you're you're being led along the way by guys who know the path they can show you the road to to follow and they can tell you the movies that you need to be looking looking at and maybe a couple of things that you need to strengthen and just these tips that are so so valuable and that learning continued in every single job that i had so i, I moved on to clone wars and we started doing uh more you know trying to push animation to be more cinematic and and dave filoni who's the guy who's leading that charge there you know was being guided by george lucas and all of these things and we were we were forced to think about storytelling in a, in a new way, a new process, and we learned things there. Learned how to shoot, how to be economical with our staging, and that was learning from all the other guys in that crew. And then sooner or later, it, with with time, you practice this over and over again, and then that that torch that has been passed to you, somebody who has taught you those ropes, you can now have the confidence to do it yourself. And you know the thinking process and the checklist of things that you need, you need to be watching out for so that you can have a really strong uh, end result with your storytelling, um, with, your, with your sequences, you know? And, any, and this goes with anything you do. So you, you have a thinking process that you go, to, go through to establish a beginning, middle, and end for any story. And you're able to kind of self-edit because you have the knowledge now to be able to do this. So what I'm getting at here is that it's important for you to find the right people that can show you the way because it's not a straight line, okay? It's not like you pick up a book and all of a sudden you're going to read storyboard <laughs> and, and be good at it. I mean, okay, shameless plug, you can look at my book, but even that, you have to understand where we're coming from and talking about those things and looking at the exercises that you need to practice in order to get to where you want to be because there's film language in there, there's technique that you got to do, there is uh, timing and rhythm as far as pacing goes for each one of your scenes, and understanding, understanding story structure and the writing process. All of this together creates this identity that we're talking about of being a storyteller and a story artist. That's really important. So where do you find these types of people? One thing that I would recommend, and here's where you can boost your education and uh, some suggestions here is whoever that you're going to either sign up for the course or go to some kind of institution uh, college level or um, and, and the same thing goes with our platform with storyboard art right if you come to us you want to see the work that we're producing you want to see the the student work that is coming out of there and you also want to see the caliber of the people that are teaching right one good sign would be if they're working professionals, right? So if they're if they're actually working in the industry, that means they day in and day out they're being tested on the story skills that they have, and most likely these types of people will be able to communicate what you need to learn to improve your work. Okay, that's the first sign. 
So if you go to some place that has like a general storyboarding course or a general storytelling, you know, kind of film theory course, but the person who's running that is not a working pro, that's the first sign of maybe you want to think hard about if you want to join up to this kind of uh, course or institution, right? Uh, the more specialized, uh, the more specialized uh, a course, the better it is. The reason I say that is because you're going to get into the nitty gritty of what you need to do with software, with programs, with uh, exporting your files and be able to work, uh, you know, in the uh, in the present day when it comes to uh, techniques and uh, in the process of of working on your on your storytelling. All that stuff is really important. Okay. Another thing that you want to be looking at is uh, how much time will you be investing into your learning process. So if it's like a a weekend seminar, okay, you might get some really good nuggets out of that, but that doesn't give you enough time necessarily to practice and put into practice the techniques that people are talking about. So one thing I would recommend there is if you have you have assignments that are guided by the instructor and somebody who's watching over you and is able to give you a constructive criticism of the work that you produce. Because here is the key. Even though we we talk about theory and maybe you can understand that how you know film language and the cutting process works. What you need is somebody to show you, hey, you missed this, this shot should be here, this can be reduced, there's more efficiency that you can gain by moving these characters here, here, and here. Have you thought about this shot? And did you think about the storytelling at the beginning versus the end? All of those uh, kind of collective storytelling advice is something that should be uh, given to you as you're doing the assignment so that when you submit the work, you get the, the, the critique and then you can go back and revise what you're doing and then create a second version that has something better to it. This is the way that we do it in the industry. You turn in a first pass, you get some notes back from your director, your supervisors or anybody else who's involved on the project. And then you go back, you correct that and you do a second and possibly a third, fourth pass, right? Depending on how much time you have. Um, that's the way you learn. That's the way you get it better. You're forced to make decisions. Okay. So this is the the closer you can get to the production process. That's another really good tip. Is that you want a an environment that's going to set you up for doing uh, those types of work. That's kind of what we've done at Storyboard Art. So this is this is one of the benchmarks that we have we have uh, sought out to do in our courses so that you have you are ready. And you won't be uh, you won't be confused if you go out into into the workplace because you already know the process. You know your naming conventions. You know how files should be set up. You know about uh, not only the, the the technical part, but you also have the theory covered, right? And this is the way. The closer that you can get to the production process, I think the better it is because that way you can just slide right in when it become when it comes to actually getting a job and working on these things and becoming a really strong artist, okay? Now, so I recommend, I highly recommend that you weigh your options when it comes to learning these things. And ourselves included, we are not exempt from that. So if you come to Storyboard Art, you see our courses, and we're not gonna show, and we don't show you what the results can be and the quality of the instructors, well, you, you better call us out. You better say, hey, this is not what I signed up for, right? And then, you know, regardless of what price and all that kind of stuff, because we could have a really long discussion <laughs> about higher education and just the enormous cost that you have to pay nowadays. And one thing that happened to me, and this was now years ago, unfortunately, was actually a couple decades ago, I had $80,000 in debt when I graduated from college, okay? Now I was able to pay that off by, by working over the years, but it took me almost eight or 10 years to pay that off. And, uh, and that's a really heavy debt and burden to do it. Now, it's even bigger. So if you go into these, like, um, yeah, especially in the United States, if you go into these institutions that are, you know, going to give you the four-year degree and all this stuff, you better make sure that what you come out with are the necessary skills for you to make a living and and fulfill your dreams. So if you go to these any one of these institutions, and you know, like I said, ourself included. So Storyboard Art as a platform, we also have to be able to deliver, or else it's not worth it. Okay. So if you sign up to our courses, you know, it's not worth your money if we're not going to give you value for what we're offering here. Okay. So that's something you should think about really strongly for anybody uh, that you sign up for as far as education or courses. 
Now, the same thing goes for individual mentors. This is another thing that you can think about. It is possible to hit up artists that you know and ask them for one-on-one -on -one guidance. Now, the prices are all over the place and, it, and also availability. This is very rare, actually, in our industry because most people who are working professionals don't have time to bring on like apprentices or students. And um, even myself, I go from, from uh, kind of patterns where I'm really, really busy and locked down and I have no time to take on another course and other times where I'm specifically opening up my schedule to bring on new students and do something. So that's something that we're going to we're going to do later on this year uh, in, in September. We're going to we're going to do another mentorship session. And I don't want to get too much into that. But if you guys have questions, I can tell you about it. Uh, but working pros are working, <laughs> so they don't have time necessarily to take on students. But you can find these people who are are you know who are veterans who enjoy teaching and um, and and like to bring on students. So one great example was Nick Song, who's in, who we had that uh, that event a couple weeks ago now, and uh, I think it was two week weekends ago. And he was you know he's one of these guys that enjoys teaching, and he's a very a very eloquent when it comes to communicating the ideas of, of composition, of storytelling, of, of improving your, your work. Those are the kinds of guys you want to seek out and learn from. Now, whether it's, you know, if they publish things online, like if they're doing YouTube videos or social media tips, those are the guys you want to follow, okay? And, um, and you know, get the most out of that. Now, fortunately, there's a lot of free resources. We like to publish a lot of free resources. And uh, the reason is just because just because we can and we can get our word out there and we can get more people to join up and onto this storytelling bandwagon i think it's to me it's a benefit to the industry that everybody uh is telling really strong stories okay so that is just like a personal um i don't know personal like goal of mine is that we, we promote these things okay and uh and we give everybody the opportunity to do this and obviously one of the reasons why like i mentioned in the beginning it was really hard for me to learn this. It was very, very difficult because the information was not readily available. And I had to just really, I feel lucky that I had the people in my life that were able to train me to be able to be the storyteller that I am today, okay? And we're still learning. It's not over yet. I, I just constantly think about what I need to do to improve and actually um, uh, become a better story artist, okay? So that's one thing for you guys, I'm going to throw this out there, is that what are you doing right now that is pushing your art forward and letting you improve in storytelling? You know, maybe you guys have a couple of stories or um, maybe some tips about what it is that you're studying. A lot of guys um, recently, uh, you know, maybe on their own or maybe it's because we've said it, it is are, they are studying film and they're doing film references and copying the compositions that they see in the films that they like. I think that's a really, really great way to learn the film language, to learn about composition and to learn about staging. Uh, those are all things that we're going to want to do. And you know, all films in general, even TV shows and episodic type stuff, because that's narrative sequential art and moving images and film, and you're trying to tell a story over time. So that's something that you really want to be working on and doing. Okay. So, um, so yeah, those are basically some some tips. Hopefully that that. Uh, will help and I will say this too so if you're already you know a lot of guys who come to us they're either recent graduates or they're still in school and maybe they're at like intern level and are looking for um, you know looking to improve and have a portfolio and do things one thing to um, one thing to think about is if you're already doing uh, or if you're already in the school or some kind of like educational platform uh, what can you do to supplement what you're doing so that uh, it, it gets you to where you want to go. So a couple of people, for example, have come to us and taken our courses. They're already in school, but they're not necessarily majoring in storyboarding or storytelling because there, there really isn't that there. I don't know of any majors that that will teach you that kind of stuff. Um, even some of these like master degrees, I've, I've seen people who come out with uh, degrees as a master degree in, in storyboarding in particular, yet their portfolio doesn't represent what you should be doing <laughs> to become a really strong storyteller. So then they come to us as a supplement to what they're already doing. So they might be learning drawing skills and general art stuff. That's really cool. That's all great. That's going to help you. 
Um, but then what you need is an addition to that is somebody who's pushing you to do story stuff. Okay. Um, those are some ideas that maybe you can have right now. So a couple of things to uh, point out as well is if you're not in a, and this, this kind of question comes up all the time. So if you're not in the U S market, if you're not in, in the United States at all, maybe you're in a remote place that doesn't have any kind of school, college, film, you know, festivals, nothing. What do you do? And so one of the, one of the suggestions that I always say is one, okay, get on the internet, get online if you can and search out uh, platforms that are going to be teaching you the things that you need to do uh, to learn what you're doing. Okay. I, I, I will, um, here's another suggestion is that a pay less attention to the degree or the certificate that any of these places would offer you because in the real world, in the working industry, nobody ever asks for your degree or title. What they're going to ask for is your portfolio and that better represent the work that you're doing so that you can become a pro. So you have to show by examples that you create in your portfolio that you are a capable artist of doing the work. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. And let me know if you guys have any stories or personal experiences with the things that you've studied and maybe you can point us all into some, some resources that we can use to uh, better ourselves for these kinds of things. Um, all right, let me scan some of these, uh, some of the questions that we got here and big shout out to everybody who's joining us here. It's so awesome that we're getting, um, you know, and I recognize some of you guys on here. So this is great. I love it. Uh, let me, let me answer a question here from, uh, animation diva. Uh, is there an inherent difference between feature story artists and TV artists? Are you just magically sorted into a hat or does feature require more experience? Um, let me, let me, there's, there's kind of, uh, there's a couple parts to that question. Yes. There's a difference between feature story artists and TV artists. Now you're doing similar work as a television board artist or a feature board artist. You're, uh, you're translating a story, uh, usually from the written word or from the script into images. And those images are, um, they're usually pushed onto creating a story reel and then you will create the final product, which is a story or an episodic, um, uh, episode <laughs> that gets aired, et cetera, et cetera. Now feature takes longer. You're talking about a development process of maybe one to two years, um, probably closer to two, sometimes even more. Uh, depending on what happens in the production, when you like get down to actually create the story, um, it, it probably takes one to two years to actually produce the boards and go back and redo it. And but the process is really similar. The difference here is the speed, the amount of time you have to do each one of those assignments. Usually in feature, you get a lot longer time because there's development work, there's a lot of experimentation, and then when you actually get there, you have time to do a lot of iterations. Um, now I'm just generalizing because sometimes on productions you don't have, even on feature, you don't have enough time. I worked on a feature, uh, early on in my career where we got six months, that, like we had boarded out the movie, but then they rewrote it and we had to do it again. We had six months between six guys to do the whole thing. If I remember correctly. Yeah. And that was a tremendous amount of work and we cranked out a ton of boards and, and we did it. It was, um, you yeah, know, it turned out okay. Uh, in a episodic environment. So TV artists, you're going to be, um, you're going to be cranking out a ton of, of boards really, really quickly. So you have to uh, make a lot of decisions. So uh, a lot of decisions and commit to, to the type of work. So are you just magically sorting into a hat or does feature require more experience? This is the second part of your question. Uh, normally feature uh, animation has bigger budgets and they're able to select artists who do have more experience. Okay. Um, now this is, again, this is just generalizing. That doesn't mean that you can't, uh, be a, you know, kind of entry level person or just have a couple of years experience, you know, one or two years out of school, or, um, you just started and you turn in a portfolio that, the, that these feature animation studios really like, and they can bring you on. And that way you can start from the get go and start learning. The, the, the real difference here is that you have to show that you can do the work. So in your portfolio, you got to show these guys that you're capable of doing either feature work or TV work. Okay. Um, the other, the other obvious difference is the subject matter. Usually in TV, there's a little bit more variety with um, how you, with the kind of the subjects of, of what the show is about or the story is about. Uh, you have anything from like really wacky comedy to intense dramatic action 
to realistic stuff, to cartoony stuff all the way across the board. So just look at some of the TV shows that are out there. And even if you scan things like Netflix or Amazon, you're going to see anime to like, you know, Disney cartoony stuff all across the board. So there stylistically, there's a difference and also um, in the subject matter with feature, especially with us feature, you're going to have, uh, you know, more kind of family oriented stories and less kind of adult stuff. Again, this is all just kind of general, general things, right? <laughs> um, now, the way to apply to each one of these, I would recommend you do a portfolio that is specific to each one of these jobs and that you create images and sequences that will both show off well for a, for, for example, if you're going to apply to a feature, you want to show them uh, character development and a lot of like emotional stuff and showing them your, your command of storytelling, staging and character work. And for doing TV boards, you want to show them depending on the show. So if you're doing action boards, you want to show action stuff. You want to show your camera work, your perspective, your really solid drawing, and uh, and show that you have examples of those things for the TV boards. Now, both of them are really, really great jobs, and you learn a lot from each one of those jobs. So I've worked in feature, and I've also worked in TV, and both are really demanding, really exciting, and super fun. Uh, as far as pay, they both pay about the same depending on where you are in your career and what studio you are at. Uh, many people have the dream of, or at least that I know, have the dream of going into feature because they they like to have that kind of longer format uh, challenge. Uh, but TV is just as fun. And as you notice, episodic TV is really coming up. And those stories that are coming out are, are really awesome. So there's a, a lot of really cool things happening in episodic uh, TV. So uh, hopefully that, that gives you a little bit of a, a hint as what to do with, um, with your choices there. <laughs> All right. Um, this is great. So let me go on to another question here from uh, Luis Alejandro. I've been struggling with trusting myself. And whenever I make stuff I'm going to show is not my best. What do you do to let yourself fail and be okay with it and have fun with portfolio work? My friend Luis, you have to get over that. You have to get over the hump. This is the process. You got to fall in love with the process. Okay. You have to fail. You have to do something. And it's not what, what people typically think of failure. It's not failure if you actually do it. You have to try and you have to go through the process because that's the only way you're going to learn. So even if you think it's absolute garbage, which I think of a lot of the stuff that I produce as garbage, you have to take that and you have to make a decision and show it. And then that's where you're at today. And then tomorrow you're going to work on it and improve yourself and get better. Okay, that's you have to do that. It's the process that you got to fall in love with, not the result. It's the process, not the product. Okay, that's something that you want to think about when you're doing these things. So what I recommend is that you turn that part of your mind off. It's going to throw in those negative doubts that, oh, this is garbage. I can't do this. It's not good enough. And you have to put your mind in a, in a place where you're just going to crank out and execute the work and you turn it in as best you can with the time that you have. Okay. And then hopefully, like I'm saying, either you have a mentor or a story supervisor or a director who's going to look over your shoulder and take what you have and maybe give you a couple of pointers and tips and you can correct that and you're ready to go. You're, you're done with that assignment and you move on to the next one. That's how you learn. That's how we all learn. We learn by experience. We learn by going through this trenches. So yes, I know it's hard and, and creating a portfolio, it may not be where you want to be now, but you have to do it and improve and keep constantly working at it in order to grow. That's the only way. There is no shortcut to putting in the work. That's the honest truth. <laughs> Good luck, my friend. Don't uh, don't get down on yourself. This is this should be fun. Remember, you're, you're a storyteller. You're an artist. Okay, this is supposed to be fun. <laughs> Great question, uh, by the way. Uh, hey, this is this one's easy to answer. So let me ask uh, answer Omar's here. What aspect ratio did you do the storyboards for the Clone Wars episodes you directed? Uh, I, well, it's funny because in, when I was working on Clone Wars, we did in the two, three, five widescreen aspect ratio where the, the, the actual original Star Wars films were shot. Uh, unfortunately for, cause I really like working in that format when we moved to rebels and resistance, uh, in those episodes, we were working at one, one, eight, seven, or sorry, one, seven, eight, which is like the 16 by nine format of your phone and typical, um, uh, typical of what you see in widescreen stuff, uh, on, on television. And so it's a little bit more cropped than what we liked. And, and, you know, I think this was a general thing that we did for that episode, but you know, it's still widescreen. It turns out great. So those are all cool things to do. Okay. Um, as far as aspect ratio stuff. 
hey, this is a great question. Let me answer this one. Okay, so the mighty, the mighty Adam here is asking, you've probably gotten this question before, but do you think the new work from home way of life has opened up more opportunities for story artists outside California? Well, yeah, I think that's kind of a self-evident thing. Studios, um, I know a couple of guys who were supposed to be in LA working on projects there and they sent them home and they're working from home outside of LA and uh, just cranking out the work in their own home. So they're working remote and I think those are the things that are gonna really um, help open up this, this kind of uh, opportunity for people who are not in these big, um, you know, like film centers, like LA, maybe New York, LA, San Francisco, Vancouver, et cetera. And that's a really good trend. So yes, I think this, what is happening, there are, you know, obviously there are downsides to what's going on now with the whole COVID crisis, but there are some upsides that we can take advantage of as artists. And I think, you know, part of it is just having a self-discipline and having a setup at home and working really well uh, from a distance, right? So uh, great question. So take advantage of it, my friends, take advantage of it for sure. Uh, all right, this is, we got a comment here from Tim. I just, I'll, publicly say this. So um, Tim is a good buddy from our mentorship course, and he's taken another class. This is great from Matt Jones, story artist who's been at Ardman and Pixar, et cetera. So if you guys want to look that guy up, uh, please do. Uh, it's always great to have um, guys, you know, pros who are, who are willing to give back and teach. So best of luck to you on that and let us know how it goes. Give us some, some tips and, and share some of the work uh, with, with us either, you know, on Facebook or, or wherever you can do it. Um, thanks, Tim, for that. Uh, all right, let me get to a couple more questions and then we'll call it for today. Uh, glad you guys could join us, by the way. Uh, all right, so we got one from Ali, Ali Yoon One. Uh, hopefully, I'm pronouncing that name correctly. So you're okay. Thank you for the free storyboard lesson. Uh, I think you're referring, you're probably referring to the Visual Story course, um, and you want to download the videos. <laughs> Great, uh, just like we do for the PDFs. All right, we'll have to look into that. I think one of the reasons that we, we don't necessarily let people download the videos is because we want them to come into the platform and sharing their info on, uh, on our platform. But we'll look into that. Great suggestion, my friend. Um, and let me get to this one. On... Oh, okay, well, that was just a comment. Well, cool, I think this is probably a good place to, um, to call it for today. And you know, just to, just lastly, but just to kind of wrap up what we're talking about here, the key thing is you should be learning. You should be learning. You should be improving yourself. No matter what you have to do, just be curious about it. Just you know, when you're you learn by doing it, right? You have to go through the work and actually do it. But then be curious and, and figure out, okay, could I have done it better? Is there another way that I should approach this? And that's where you're going to seek out other people who are doing similar things, and you look at their approach and you know, look at finished products and TV shows and movies and everything under the sun, but also look at story guys who are working and doing the things that you want to be doing. And hopefully you can, uh, you can figure out a couple tricks on your own and then try it the next time you do it, apply those, those techniques and things that you've been thinking about in your own work. And that's the way you're going to improve and push yourself to do better. All right, friends. Well, thanks for joining me. And uh, as always, you can see the replay of this stuff on our social media. Check out our YouTube page, our YouTube channel, and also our, our Facebook page where we have these live streams going and you can see all the replays. All right, guys. Take care. We'll talk to you later. See ya.